that does not mean that we're building a society where everybody has two Cadillacs <laughs> or everyone has a mansion or everyone has a Hummer, you know. These issues have to be dealt with. The type of socialism that uh, we see in many parts of the world, you have to take in consideration resources that we have. Take, for instance, in China. If China, the Chinese, use paper like we use in this country, and within 10 years there would be no forests. So sustainability has to be a criteria in the world. Now, when we talk about world socialism, what does that mean, sustainability on a worldwide uh, scale? Well, we will determine that collectively. But for surely, it can't be wasteful. It has a taken uh, uh, taking consideration that we don't have an infinite amount of resources. We have to use technology in, a, in its proper way for all, not for just a few. And uh, this cannot be imposed. Everybody in the world will have to be politically one to it. Mm. Um, I want to just let people know, if in case they're just tuning in, um, um, I'm Eric Angel, and this is Our World in Depth, and I'm with uh, Harry McAllister and Michael Wood, uh, both members of the Communist Party. Um, both have been active in the Twin Cities and in Minnesota. Um, and as uh, members of the Communist Party, uh, we're talking about um, some of the uh, issues that are really confronting humanity, uh, class struggle, um, and I, I more recently tried to uh, talk a bit about um, environmental struggle. Uh, Michael, you mentioned yeah. Hugo Chavez. Uh, yes. br you brought up Hugo Chavez. Uh, is he a communist? Um, we're probably going to be hearing that in the media pretty soon if we haven't already. Is he a communist? Uh, that was Harry's question. Okay. We talked about this before. And Harry's going to deal with the question of Venezuela and Chavez. Okay. okay. Uh, in a classical sense, uh, no, he would not be considered a, a communist. Mm. There is a communist party in uh, Venezuela, and there are other communist organizations. Mm. Uh, I think what you can call him is a socialist. Uh, what he is doing in his Bolivian uh, revolution there is that he's trying to use the all wealth of the country for the benefit. I, I have to interrupt. I think it's Bolivarian Revolution. Bolivarian. Yes. I stand corrected. All right. Well, what he's trying to do is use the all wealth of the country to uh, basically take, take care of the basic needs of the vast majority of the population, which is poor. And that is 70, 75, even 80 percent of the population. And uh, he is also doing something which is. Uh, uh, rather unclassical Marxist. He is uh, taking uh, companies which would go out of business or become bankruptcy, buying these companies up, encouraging the workers in, in these companies to uh, develop cooperatives. So now in Venezuela, if you are a worker and you want to develop a farming cooperative or you want to develop a uh, a clothing cooperative, the government will give you loans. At this particular time, with the exception of uh, agrarian reform, he is not nationalizing large uh, sections of the economy. So it is a new concept of socialism, and we wish him well. Um, he has did a lot of things which are positive for that 80 percent of the population in Venezuela. And he's actually did some very good things for Americans, like he's selling oil to uh, uh, New England, to uh, the Bronx and New York at uh, cut rate prices so people can get through the winter mm -hmm. without having uh, uh, their heat uh, cut off. So it's a story that probably uh, the mainstream media in the United States hasn't covered exactly. hardly at all. <laughs> exactly. uh, he offered assistance to the uh, people in New Orleans after 
uh, Katrina. Yeah, doctors. Doctors. Uh, he offered uh, oil and uh, mm. gasoline and these types of things. Mm. So clearly, he has a concept of building socialism, which is not exactly classical Marxist. He calls it socialism of the 21st century. But uh, we, we wish him well. Mm. Not only the people in Venezuela, but the people in uh, all of Latin America from Brazil to Bolivia to uh, Ecuador and Argentina who have rejected the neoliberal uh, model of uh, development because mm. it's, it is so disruptive to those economies. Mm. Michael, do you want to say a few things? Um, all right. Um, you know, I heard a little, a little story about people in Venezuela. I heard everybody there carried a constitution in their back pocket. And they pulled out the constitution and they read it. Um, and it was a very popular book, a mass book. Now, compare that to the United States Constitution. And, you know. Or the people of the United States who probably have never read the of course. U.S. Constitution. Of course. Of yeah. course. Yeah. Um, and may not even know the, the Bill of Rights. Um, you know, and I think, too, uh, when our working class takes power here, let us hope and let us struggle that our socialist constitution is as popularly loved as Venezuela's. I think it's a great thing what's happening in Venezuela. What I know of it is incredibly inspiring. Uh, you know, of course, Chavez is demonized by the ultra-right and the Bush administration. We share, I believe, the working class of this country, a common enemy. Uh, we share with the Venezuelans a common enemy against the Bush administration. I see their progress is connected to ours. Um, long live Venezuela. Um, I wanted to try to touch on this kind of uh, reputation that communism uh, and democracy do not go together, that they're like oil and water, they don't mix. Mm -hmm. um, is that propaganda or is there some truth to uh, communism or socialism um, not being democratic? Certainly if you're talking about Chavez, uh, being socialist uh, and uh, clearly being popularly elected over and over again. Um, everything I've read is that the elections were completely valid. Uh, the media there is completely free. Uh, actually, it's anti-Chavez. Um, and yet, Chavez has managed to reach the people and overcome uh, the, the negative bias within the media in Venezuela. So clearly, not always is, uh, is socialism and democracy um, head to head. I mean, they can go together. Um, is, that, is this an exception, or is communism actually uh, closely related to democracy? Well, I think this touches on an earlier question about um, capitalist propaganda against uh, socialism, against communism. Uh, part of the smear campaign has depicted the communist countries, the socialist countries, places like the former socialist Soviet Union as un undemocratic nightmares. Right? They've told you, they've told us, they've told me, that socialism and communism is against democracy. This, from the very same parasitical class that tells you the United States is the most democratic country. The most democratic country. The country where you have the democratic right to be unemployed, to be beat by a police stick, to have your vote suppressed like it was in Ohio. Right. So socialism is a very democratic system for the working class. Lenin wrote about that in State and Revolution. He spoke of uh, the capitalist democracy, and we should always add a class content to this. Capitalist democracy versus socialist democracy. Capitalist democracy, what we have in the United States is by and large a government and a democracy of, by, and for the rich.